I like to use flight sims to try and stay current, especially when I can't go out flying for real. And I recently got hold of this new Logitech 3D Pro joystick to try and add a bit more realism to the whole flight sim experience. Animal Crossing. So I ordered this online, it arrived the other day, it cost me $79 and I figured what I'd do in today's video is plug it into X-Plane and find out if having something like this can actually help if you are learning to fly. Pew, 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 pew. Not actually playing anything, it's not even plugged in at the moment. It comes with a USB-A connector, which is a consideration if you're running a machine like a MacBook Pro, which I run X-Plane on, because these don't have USB-A connectors anymore. They only have the USB-C one. So if you are buying this, just bear in mind that it's gonna come with an older style USB. So what you'll need, is something like this, which is a USB adapter. So you can plug the joystick into the adapter. So you can plug the joystick into the adapter. Why does it never work? And then plug the adapter into the MacBook. Then apparently once that's done, all I need to worry about is opening up X-Plane and it should recognize the joystick automatically. I haven't tried it yet though, so. So let's open up X-Plane and it starts with the normal first screen. This is good, so it automatically recognizes that there's a new device plugged in. It says it's an uncalibrated device and it tells me to calibrate now. So let's calibrate. Axis one, roll, 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 roll. Yeah, nice, axis two, pitch. So the lines remain red until it's got, I suppose until it's calibrated correctly, yaw. Now the good thing about this joystick is you can yaw we're by actually twisting it, so you can twist it left like that, twist it right, and that's done. An axis three throttle. I've got this small lever on the back here. You can see this one, which I'm gonna use for the throttle. Throttle forward, throttle back, throttle forward. And then what I can, this is pretty cool, then what I can do is using all the buttons, and there are loads of buttons on this thing as well, at least 15 according to this, I can use them to map two different functions on the aircraft as well. For example, I wanna use this hat switch at the top for the electric trim. And a few of you have told me in the past as well to use the trigger for braking. So all I do is click on the button that I want, hold brakes maximum, pitch trim down, pitch trim up, down. Let's go. I think that's pretty much it. Let's do a new flight. Let's pick, of course, the red rocket and let's go out of an airport that we know. Back in the Cirrus Vision jet. Let's just check that it's looking amazing. Yes, it is. Let's go full throttle. And then I can test my directional control with the yaw. Oh, that's brilliant. That's sensitive. We've got 50 knots. We've got 60 knots, 70 knots. Rotate. Pitch up, Steph. There we go. Now, one thing I want to try then is this electric trim. So if I let go of the controls, obviously things are going to level off again, but can I trim back? <laughs> it helps if I, my battery doesn't run out. Let's go, brakes off. Full power. It's great having the trim on the hat switch at the top because you can trim and then you can kind of let go. All right, gear up. All right, let's just try and approach then into the runway here. Let's see how accurate we can get it. Oh, I didn't assign a button for flaps. Flapless landing here, uh, we're way fast. This isn't going particularly well. This was a terrible approach. It all comes down to a stabilized approach, but the controls here, oh, I didn't, gear down. Gear down, is that button? Full power go around. Okay, I need to map a few more keys, hang on. All right, so here we are then on a three mile final into the runway. Let's see if we can, let's see how accurate it is to actually try and land a plane using the joystick. I think it wants me to put my gear down and we just want to bring it in nice and slowly on the glide slope. Coming in a little bit fast, so I'm going to take a bit of power off. Pull back on the stick just a little bit to bring the nose up just to slow us down. 500 feet to go. It's looking pretty stable at the moment. Famous last words from any pilot. This approach is looking great. I do like being able to very carefully make tiny little adjustments in the power, just using this throttle lever at the bottom, that's great. 
course there's another TCAS alert low down at Moorabbin Airport. Another student pilot. All right, so a little bit off center line, so we'll just bring us around like that. Coming back on the power, runway is made. Flaring. God, what's going on on the side of the runway there? Flaring above the runway, holding it back. Little bounce, holding its back, braking. Directional control. What's happening on the side of the runway? No idea. Awesome. I'm not just saying this because I didn't want to light this joystick too much, but that was actually straightforward. Why are you taxiing on the runway? I haven't even vacated. At least let me get, okay, you're taking off, fine. Okay, I'll just give you some space. Whoa. What I really want to use this for though, is I do a fair amount of IFR or instrument flight rules training. I want to see how good this is for things like practicing hand flying an instrument approach. That's looking better. So overcast conditions. Oh, let's turn this to CDI. So we're on the localizer. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the glide slope to come in and see if we can fly this down the ILS using just the joystick. So no autopilot, no cheating like I normally would in Echo Yankee Zulu. Now I normally would be capturing this from 3,000 feet. I know I'm below. I can try and climb up to get to the glide slope, but we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna chug along at 2,000 feet for now, just assuming the air traffic control have held us down a little bit lower for whatever reason. It can happen. I've had to capture the glide slope at um, Skip hole in Amsterdam from 2,000 feet before, so they can get you to do that sometimes. Now this is no way a demonstration of how to fly an ILS, so please do not watch this and then go and try this for real or tell your instructor. This is how Steph flew the ILS at Avalon. This is just me testing the joystick to see if it's actually helping me with my hand flying skill. So glide slope is coming in. When we got one dot deflected, then we're gonna go uh, we're going to slow the aircraft down, so slow the aircraft down, we're going to go one stage of flaps, we're going to go gear down, and then we're just going to ride the glide slope down. So I'm a little bit above, and now we're off localizer, so I'm going to just turn around. So I've been focusing there and concentrating on something else, and I've come way off the localizer, so little movements to fly the localizer again. All right, now we're quite a bit above the glide slope, so I'm just gonna reduce power a little bit to get back down onto the glide slope. Now we're back on localizer, so let's turn back to that heading. This is a shonky attempt at flying the ILS, I tell you, this is not the most accurate flying I've done in my life. All right, glide slope's looking a little bit better. We've got 1,500 feet, our minimum is 390. Back on the localizer, we've got 1,000 feet for 390. Things start to get a little bit more twitchy as we get closer to the ILS, but I haven't got the flight director in here either, which are the other two arrows that can help you sometimes when you are trying to fly down an ILS. It's like basically having a autopilot helping you out, but I didn't want to do, I didn't want to cheat with that. I'm just hand flying using the raw data. 480. Now, see we're breaking visual, so let's take this off. We are visual, great, let's land. So flaps down, power back, 390. We've got minima there, continue. Lined up nicely, this is looking pretty good. Our uh, speed's a bit slow, I know that, but I'm not used to the speeds in the Vision Jet. I think I'm still doing the speeds for the SR22. But there we go, Pappy's showing two reds, two whites. Flaring, flaring, and braking. And welcome to Avalon, a typically gray Avalon. Hey, that was really good. I was quite happy with that, very realistic. Okay, so after playing around with this thing for a few hours, what are my thoughts? Can you use this to like really improve your flying and can you learn to fly using something like this? Well, from a hand flying skills perspective, yeah, you don't quite get the same touch and the feel that you would obviously in the movement in a, in a real aircraft. But in terms of using the instrumentation to fly an instrument approach, yeah, I reckon this actually could help improve my flying. You can't replicate the same feelings you get landing an aircraft, the feeling of, you know, the airflow over the control surfaces that you get flying for real. But does it help to add to the realism so it makes you feel a little bit more immersed and therefore maybe it does make your brain think in the way that it should be thinking? Yeah. One quick comment though, what I will say is being a Cirrus pilot, I do fly with a side stick. So this is incredibly realistic for me. If you fly with a control yoke, then you might not get the same kind of sensation that you would obviously because it's, it's a very different feeling. This joystick, I think because it's a gaming joystick, it's really meant to be used with your right hand. There's a little thumb bit here. You can see where your thumb rests and there's a button. I don't know what that button does. I haven't programmed it. But it's more natural for your right hand to sit on this joystick. Whereas when you're flying as pilot in command in the left seat, 
in a Cirrus, you wanna be using it with your left hand. So it's a little bit awkward, but to be honest, you get past that in a couple of minutes. Also, I do wanna say this, this is my flight sim setup. This is a MacBook Pro from 2017. Uh, this joystick, like I said at the beginning, cost me $79, and I've got X-Plane 11 running on this laptop here, and that's it. Now, you can obviously get a whole bunch of flight sim equipment. You can get throttle quadrants, rudder pedals, multiple screens, and that's great if flight sim is, is something you wanna get into seriously, but if you just, if you're a student pilot and you're just looking for a solution to help you, you know, like I said, with your instrument flying or, or maybe just with how you trim the aircraft or, or just basically using a flight sim to try and improve your skills at home, you don't need a massively fancy, sophisticated setup. Don't get too carried away with the gear. You don't need all the gear. You can do a lot with an $80 joystick and a copy of X-Plane running on a laptop. And to be honest, save your money and spend it on Avgas. If you're new to the channel and you do love your aviation and travel content, do consider clicking on this subscribe button here. It means a lot to me to see the channel grow and helps me make more videos like this in the future. Otherwise, thanks as always for watching. 